Hi, I'm Dave from Hardy Skill Models and welcome to the second part of my Vickers Valiant build for my V Project 2023. Thanks for visiting my channel today. Do consider giving the video a thumbs up uh, or a like and uh, do have a look at the channel, maybe subscribe and you'll be there to see all the other content that's coming up in this project during the year and any other videos that I release in the meantime. Thanks guys. So this is where we got to last time. I uh, got the cockpit all finished up, um, painted, weathered, a uh, little bit of sort of distress on some of the materials and did a quick test fit. So the next job to do was to give the interior of the cockpit a bit of a quick uh, spray with the airbrush, um, some dark green. Um, I haven't gone with the green recommended. I've gone for a slightly darker color to offset what was on the uh, actual cockpit itself. And then after I'd done the test fit again, because uh, just to make sure, and you'll see why in a moment, um, started getting the cockpit into the airframe. So uh, just gluing it in with some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and uh, making sure it's secured in place because uh, it is quite a large piece of the cockpit. And then once we've got that in, it was a case of uh, getting some of the smaller pieces that are going to go in and around the cockpit ready, uh, sanded down. Uh, that's the undercarriage bay or part of it that's going underneath. Um, and then basically the next job was to do with the variation that you do. So I'm building the B version, which needs the tail cone removed. That's on the molded kit. So you can see here, I've uh, gone through that with a micro saw um, just to uh, remove that part. There's a new part in the kit that has to go on it. Um, if you're doing the, the early variant, the A variant, you don't need to do this. Um, so you obviously decide beforehand if this is something that you want to do. Um, you may not have a micro saw, you might not be interested in doing that sort of stuff. So just obviously check the instructions before you uh, continue on. And uh, came off fairly easy. This is a Tamiya micro saw with the uh, larger blade. Uh, and then once I got that off, it was a case of starting to uh, soften up the edge uh, so that I can look to put the new cone on. I'd done it was uh, onto the other side and the panel lines on here are quite dis they're quite obvious so it, it's quite easy to follow you can't really go wrong the, the, the saws are unlikely to slip out of the panel line and sort of chip into the plastic that you want to keep flat so it's a pretty straightforward job and again just uh, tidy that once I'd finished and then once that was done I got out my favorite tool on my workbench which is a Tihu desk vacuum cleaner which is a tiny little battery powered thing um, comes in really handy and it just picks up all the little bits of shavings, uh, off cuts, etc., and uh, cleans up in seconds. So, once I got myself all cleaned up here, uh, it was just a case of starting to put on the uh, small parts that we've just prepped. So, with these two parts, there aren't actually there's a ridge that it sits on, but there's no actual sort of holding point or uh, joint for it to sit into, clip into. So it's a little bit fiddly. So um, you may have to uh, hold the pieces in place a little while for the uh, extra thin to, to grab a hold of it. Um, just a little point, because mine uh, kept falling off. So we kept going uh, back and forward with that. And then we got the top piece on the cockpit, which goes behind the uh, crew seats, the, the front crew seats. Uh, which basically obscures pretty much the entire rear cabin uh, once the kit is all together. And uh, this bit became a problem, and again, you'll see why in a moment, uh, because there was a, a rather large error that came up and uh, it took a bit of cleaning up. So with the model, I've decided to do the bomb bays closed because I'm putting in a diorama, I'm going to have the bomb bays closed. So for this option, that there's a, a few steps that you do here where you put in these sort of spars, uh, across the bomb bay and then you skip over about 20 or so steps in the instruction manual uh, and just put on a solid piece of uh, bomb bay door. I'm using car tire weights here for ballast uh, for the nose. Uh, you, I told you to use 22 grams by the kit so I'm actually using 30 grams here and these are weights that are stuck on the car wheels to balance them. Uh, so they're self-adhesive, so that eliminates having to use any super glue or PVA glue in the nose cone. And uh, hopefully that will be enough to hold the aircraft down. And I also thought I would include an outtake of what I was having a problem with. So here you can see it, this kit did not want to go together. That, that one's not aligned there, but the front end didn't want to go together. It kept popping open. And as you can see here... There's a rather large gap down that left upper left hand side of the uh, cockpit area, just behind the uh, pilot seat. And it's not the kit. I, I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with the kit. 
it's something that I've done wrong. I've gone back through the instructions, I'm not sure, but that is the debris from what I've had to shave off the edge of the cockpit to get it to close. So it was quite a lot of sort of plastic that I had to remove. Not entirely sure what's happened there, but I don't think I say the rest of the kit is quite smoothly going together, so I can't imagine it was that. Uh, so then uh, moved on, like I said earlier, to the Bombay doors um, and just doing a quick drive for it. And as you can see, that wasn't quite fitting in. It was There was some uh, very small sort of extended end. So uh, just sand that down on a sanding stick. That's quite, I think that's a 120. It's quite a coarse stick so that I could just do a few, do it as quickly as possible and then smooth it off. So kept sanding, testing, sand, test, just to make sure it fits before any glue is involved. And uh, once I've got it in the uh, correct dimensions, uh, just got it down and then again, just use some Tanya Extra Clear to uh, stick the uh, Bombay bolt doors in, in view, in, in place, sorry. So again, because I'm putting this in the diorama, I didn't really want to uh, do the Bombay's open with uh, all the bombs on because you're not going to see them. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll have those on racks or something like that next to the aircraft. Okay, so happy with the fit there now. Uh, so got the glue on, uh, get that stuck down, and then I've uh, used some Tamiya tape just to uh, hold everything in place until the glue goes off. Um, you don't really need to do this with Tamiya Extra Thin. You could probably leave it for an hour, but I tend to leave it overnight if I'm working on anything that's like a larger piece, just to make sure that everything is properly, uh, the, the glue's properly gone off and fused together. And then it's a case now of just working my way around uh, the Bombay doors and the uh, extra parts of the airframe that I've just stuck on there just to make sure that everything is in place, held down with tape and then just leave it for 24 hours. And now it came to the wings. So first part of this is once you've got them all cleaned up is to add in the underside of the undercarriage bay um, with, the, with the detail in it. And that'll eventually hold the, uh, the undercarriage uh, wheels themselves. So uh, using time yet extra thin for this and just making sure that uh, obviously you get the right way around and everything's clicked in into place. So always remember to do your dry fits. And then while they were setting, uh, moved on quickly to uh, some of the smaller pieces. So the turbine blades got those painted up, uh, primed and painted up. And then this is where we got to. So everything ready to go together. And first stage, it was the uh, engines themselves. So as you can see here, they have um, some injector pin marks that are really obvious and they're at the end that will be on show. So I had to get rid of those really. So uh, a little bit of filler, Tamiya filler uh, going in there with a, 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 I think it's a Mr. Hobby sort of filler applicator, a little sort of spatula. So get that in there and um, repeat on all the sides because unfortunately it was on all four pieces. And uh, it was just a really unfortunate place for the injector pin mark to be. So not the end of the world, it's dead easy to sort out, so uh, get that in, let it dry, and then it was just a case of sanding everything back and making it nice and smooth. So I've got out the Tamiya Panline Accent Colour Black again, and this time using it to add some definition to the fan blades. Uh, they will be pretty far back in the wing, but uh, you know, if it depends if you're going to be looking down there, but yeah, they'll have definition on this time. And the uh, actual engine mounts, which sit inside the wing, the fr in, just inside the front edge of the wing, uh, one big clip in the middle that uh, joins them together, I glue that in place first, and then it's just a case of uh, some little bits of uh, glue just around the outside. The instructions say that you need to put in the turbine blades first before you seal this up, but that's actually not true. You can just stick them in the back once you've done it. And that's the way I decided to do it, just so I had everything painted up uh, and then got those uh, put in the back. And the first thing, the last thing I need to do before I did that was uh, using Tamiya, uh, sorry, using Vallejo plastic putty, sorry, which is really good for uh, smaller lines and hiding the lines inside uh, here because it's uh, easily removable with a wet. Uh, cotton bud so get the get the uh, putty in and then use the wet cotton bud to wipe off the excess and leave a small uh, a nice smooth sort of line and here what you can see is there are optional holes to uh, cut out of the wing for the uh, fuel tank um, pylon so I'll be putting the fuel tanks on so this again uh, just uh, I haven't it's quite a large hole and I haven't got a drill bit that big so uh, it was a case of I used the knife just to make the hole round it off a bit and then once I could get um, a circular file in uh, got it all uh, to the right correct size and as you can see here just 
sand a bit, do a dry fit, sand a bit, do a dry fit until you're happy. And uh, don't use glue until you've got it exactly where the, the size that you need to have it. So now we can get the engines into the wings. Uh, so the mountain sort of rods in the bottom of the wing are, are quite uh, quite good. So it, it does sit quite snugly. And it sits just below, there's a little lip right on the leading edge of the wing there that it just sits behind. So a little bit of glue on the bottom, glue in place. And then again, a couple of bits of tape just to hold everything in place until I'm happy that the glue is set. Um, so that all went on to really nicely. There was no issues with that and repeat the process through the wing and this is where you should get to should sit in quite nicely in there and then it was a case of getting the wings sealed so what i'm doing here is again a dry fit just making sure that everything's sitting flush there's there's the wings not warped or anything like that which i have to say it wasn't it was a, a really nice fit so when i'm closing the wing up i'm going to use a different glue so i'm using uh contact a professional from revel which is um a longer setting glue um but i'm going to be leaving these for at least 24 hours so all the joining points all the joining uh, marks there and the edges get some of the glue in there uh, it's got a really fine applicator needle so you can get it into the smallest nooks and crannies quite neatly and it was just a case of going around getting a, a full coverage of the whole outline of the wing uh, obviously bear in mind that if you put too much in it's going to squeeze out and you don't really want that on the outside of the plastic so just being a little bit careful but uh, all the way around and once I was happy with everything, just making sure that every sort of touch point was going to have glue on it, especially around the engines and the bits that are going to be obvious to see when you close tightly. And then it was a case of dropping the wing on top. So done the dry fit, got the glue on, get the wing on and it fitted beautifully, just snapped into place straight away. Uh, and then again, as I normally do, uh, hold everything down with Tamiya tape and then repeat the process on the other side. And then what I did was, when before I took the tape off, I just had a quick look around, and if there was any small little gaps, I uh, just used some Tamiya extra thin cement, uh, added a little bit of that to the uh, the small gaps, just to get them all closed up, a little bit more tape, and then I think I left it, uh, not out of choice, I think there was plenty going on in the house, so it was left for about uh, 24, 48 hours. And we got to this point here, which is the wings just about to go on. And just for scale, there's a nice little uh, 1 to 70 second scale Bassett Beagle next to it there. So that's the end of part two. Uh, if you just visit this video for the first time, thank you. If you watched part one and came back to watch part two, thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in seeing any of the builds that I'm working on and any of the videos that I release. Um, any likes and subscribes would really help the channel and uh, it would be very much appreciated, guys. So uh, part three will be coming soon. Until then, thanks very much and uh, thanks for visiting my channel. Take care, guys.